have him kind of get Mike Young up to speed and get the whole team aligned, and it seems to be working wonders for them because now TSM have strung three games together for the first time this split. Well, let's see if they can take it to four or if 100 Thieves will shut them down. Both these teams sitting at seven and six in the standings, and as we are in week seven out of nine, every win is going to count that much more. So this could be a big make or break for one of these two teams. We'll have to see how it ends up affecting everything as we get into picks and bans with Cassiopeia, Azir, and Braum banned out by the Thieves TSM, responding with Rise. Skarner, who is pretty much the only permanent red side ban left these days, and one more still to choose. Yep, things like Galio is still on the table. Scion's dropped a little bit in that priority, but we'll see what TSM go for here. Rise is something they really didn't want to play up against, especially with the Cassiopeia being banned away. Right. The question is, do they once again throw another mid lane ban? But it looks like it's Jungle Kha'Zix getting a lot of respect recently. Yep, we'll see him banned away. We got to see some pretty impressive moves already on that one today in the last game, but we won't get to see any more of it just yet. 100 Thieves decide to start things off, grab themselves AD carry first and foremost, picking up the Zaya there for Cody Sun. And Cody Sun has do been doing incredibly well from a damage per minute standpoint, but that leaves a Camille and Galio combo, which is snatched Ooh. right up from TSM. And we know how good this combination of two champions is. Camille ults someone, she issues the Hextech ultimatum, that Thunderdome that makes you not be able to get out of that small area, and the Galio dunk is all but guaranteed. Very potent combination. Yeah, they played this combination up against Echo Fox back in week six. They combined it with a Kha'Zix, though, so he was able to play towards the pivot in the side lanes. But Bjergsen went 6, 0, and 12 on that Galio. So TSM fans originally, they were like, Bjergsen, don't play Galio. Now it's more like, hey, play that AP Galio. It's like, all right, get the Galio in there. Get the Galio in there. Now 100 Thieves, they're going to respond. They're saying, all right, you got a combo. Well, we've got a combo that's literally written into the lore. So they're picking up the Zyra Khan for themselves. Very strong there in the bottom part of the map. Also, going to go ahead and get that Sejuani there in the jungle. Yeah, I like the Sejuani. She kind of went through a change where people started shifting around her runes a little bit, took away the uh, fleet footwork from her, started putting Aftershock in there, been now splitting between the uh, Precision Tree for some more attack speed. So she's in a very good place where she's a high priority jungler, I would say right below Skarner. But the combo that 100 Thieves have, Afro move was able to help them have a 2-0 last week with his Thresh and Blitzcrank and big playmakers. Now in the Rakan once again, remember he's one of the first people to debut Rakan in the North American LCS when it came out. He's loved this champion and I wanna see if he's able to get to that back line. And so you have to think, what are they gonna ban out here? It's probably some mobile AD carries that Sven could use to get away is what I would think. Well, they'll ban away an immobile AD carry in the Varus. Pretty strong in the laning phase, though. So up against something like Zaya and Rakan that can traditionally smack you around in lane, you want to get rid of something that might be able to stand up against that. TSM targeting the mid lane pool a little bit here with Talia being their first ban of this second part of the bans. Yeah, Corky, Syndra, uh, all kind of jump up. Corky, yep, there's the there one. Getting rid of that one, so Bjergsen won't have to deal with that with that mid lane Galio. One more ban to go for 100 Thieves. You still expecting an 80 carry here? Or you think we're going to see something different? I would expect Tristana or Caitlyn possibly to be one of the bans here because those can easily stay in the back, get away from Aphromoo's reach. And Aphromoo, this is a composition from TSM's side where the front line, it's pretty ample here. You're going to have yeah. a Camille that'll go pretty bruisery. You have a Zac for engage. And they don't want to have something that's going to, you know, help that engage even more, but looks like the Alistar will be the other thing okay. that they're going to take away. So no, not actually uh, banning out any of those AD carries besides the Varus. Preventing some engage, preventing some playmaking, not wanting their opponents to kind of be able to pull that same trigger that Aframu is so well known for and did so well last week. TSM, in terms of their AD carry, though, they will grab the Ezreal, so it is one of those mobile, hard to stick on to type of picks you were expecting. Yeah, so able to dodge out. Sven's been loving this champion, this split so far. He's played it his last three games in a row. They've won three games, so he's only died once in all three of those games combined on the Ezreal. So we'll see how safe he is today. Whereas 100 Thieves, I do want to see what they pick in that top lane to go up against the Camille. Because someday yesterday played, I believe, the Cho'Gath, and it wasn't really that great. Or I believe it was Scion, actually. Well, this game he's going to be potentially taking the Fiora here. Still has 10 more seconds. Oh, I like it. About it. Nope. Gonna be grabbing the Poppy. You can't stop eat the poppies, Irene. That is. <laughs> Unless, of course, you take him down over and over in lane. We'll have to see if someday can have a better lane than what we saw from him yesterday. Cody Sun also picking up the victor there for Ryu in the mid lane as TSM has one pick left to go. It is their support and they're thinking about that Kench, unbenching him, letting him have that extra save power onto anybody who might be in some danger from the initiation. 
from Aphromu and Meteos, and they will lock that one in. Yeah, so not going for a support that would help with the initiation, but helping with peel duty to get them away from somebody like Aphromu, like you said. But I want to talk about this Poppy here, because yesterday, someday, was playing Scion into Shen and wasn't able to do too well. But Poppy is like the OG Camille counter. When Camille was just super busted and she came out, everybody was playing her and they were like, how do we stop this thing? Eventually, Poppy kind of surfaced as the soft counter to it. But Poppy has received some buffs pretty recently with things to like more damage to on her E, her shield having a little bit better, higher base value when she's able to shield herself. But this stops the Camille hook shot, it stops the Zac, and it stops a huge. lot of the engage, and it stops the Thunderdome combo with the Camille and the Galio from hitting true immediately. And that's something you always, or at least something I always look at when I see Zack locked in. If the enemy team's got something like a Janna, like a Poppy, something that can deny that huge engage mechanism that is literally what the champion is made to do, that's a big weapon that you've got in your arsenal that you can use to turn the tide of some fights that you otherwise might have got caught off guard in. So I like the fact that the Poppy's been picked up here. I personally think it's a great choice into what TSM is drafting. But for both these teams, Things are looking pretty good where they're at in the standings. Like we said, seven and six. Both teams looking to make a statement here against another squad that's very similar to where they're at right now in terms of their playoff aspirations, their postseason goals right now. Yeah, both these teams have gone three and one in the last uh, half right here. And for 100 Thieves and TSM, it was a lot of communication issues in the first half. TSM looked a little bit scattered, and then 100 Thieves looked like too many cooks in the kitchen, right? Too many shot callers. And then as it's been Aphromu on a lot of playmakers in the last few weeks, they've been looking better and better. But yesterday was where they faltered a little bit, mostly because of that top lane with Someday. But we'll see what he's able to do here in this counter pick matchup. And if they don't have that global pressure of the Shen on the other side, what Aphromu is able to do and try to affect the game. And speaking of how things are affected, there's a pretty big difference between the mental effect of going one and one on a week and going zero and two on a week. Going zero and two on a week, especially with a new patch, it feels really bad because then you feel like you've got a really bad read on the patch, you've got a lot of things you've got to correct for, and so for 100 Thieves, hitting that sort of a stutter yesterday in the success that they were on, you want to make sure that you stop it. You want to try to get yourself back into the game here, and you can tweet us your questions for Freak, Zyrene, and Azale to answer during NALCS tonight using hashtag NALCS. If you have anything pop into your mind during this game, you think, hey, that would be a good thing that I would like to ask those dudes. Go ahead, let us know on Twitter, and we'll see if we can answer some of those yeah, for later on in the evening. Ask for those hot takes, you know. Yeah, exactly. Opinions. Get the spicy stuff in there. Exactly. That's what we love to see. Make them answer the tough questions. Don't just give them the easy stuff. I mean, in this game right here, actually, I do have some it questions myself because Medios once again, going for the fleet footwork when I feel like Aftershock on this patch is actually just a little bit better. Uh, changes up what you can take in the early game as well. You can even go for the uh, medallion instead of the talisman to start, or sorry, the talisman to start instead of the machete. Um, and also, uh, Cody Sun has a coup de grace still, whereas most AD carries have actually swapped over to cut down, the one where if somebody has more HP than you, you can actually do more damage to them, which would be very good here. So hold on. Plenty of damage coming oh, out of the 100 Thieves bottom lane. Yeah, the Zaya W early on, the clean cuts at level one, applying to Rakan and Zaya both, makes them very deadly yeah, in those or, early stages. Already got the heal out of Sven. They were just so spooked by that, and that's why this combination early is just so powerful. You saw Aphromu, as soon as he went forward, with, the, the, with his own W, was able to actually just allow them a lot of damage. And so they'll hit level two first, they'll zone them off, and try to stop that bottom lane from TSM from actually having an advantage here. With the victor this game, you think we're going to see some of the some of the Iceborne Gauntlet, no. the Thistle Mask, the Dun build? Or are we going to see more of that traditional AP type of victor that just blasts people down? I don't know if we've even seen the Iceborne Gauntlet of Thistle Mask in competitive. I think the AP item changes has really made it so victor feels really good about buying things. Even like Tyr um, feels really good on him because he gets mana from his Hex Core. So buying the Archangel Staff, just even more AP on top of it. Uh, so I think the AP itemization already pushed it over the edge where they won't go for those uh, no, Abyssal Mask plus Iceborne Gauntlet tank builds. Well, Archangel is just so strong now, too. I mean, you can really come away from that overall AP itemization overhaul saying that the people who best utilize that item are the big winners walking away from that one. I think it was 
yesterday I heard something. Rise's solo queue win weight went up something disgusting, like 5% yeah. because of the Archangel change, because he's such a good user of that item. So anybody else who can use it, I would expect some similar good vibes heading their way. Top side, someday down a little bit of CS here early against Haunter. Has a couple more creeps to farm up to keep that relatively even there in that matchup. Bjergsen and Ryu just continuing to trade back and forth here as Bjergsen will clear those waves out first and foremost since Ryu does need to get a hex core upgrade to get the second part of that laser before Victor's wave clear really becomes that trademark of the champion that we know him for. Exactly. Needs that extra little bit of a oomph behind it. I believe it's actually called an aftershock on the uh, the E. We got too many things I know. sounding the same now. Too many abilities, they're all just adding up. Yeah, it's Augment Aftershock is what it's actually legitimately called. So we're going to have to change that around. More aggro coming out in the bottom lane from 100 Thieves. Going on to Zven once more. Aphromu not afraid to go in on this TSM bottom lane, recognizing the strength of the Zaya and the Rakan. And if you're 100 Thieves, you got to be feeling good about that because this is the TSM bottom lane that, remember, was imported from Europe, from G2, from the team that won the EU LCS time and time and time again. These guys, best in the West, they were called by many. And 100 Thieves, no fear going up against them right now. Yeah, right now, you can see Mithy is actually completing his back. Will he swap for teleport? No, he's just going to go ahead and take a back timer there and get himself back down to the bottom lane. He does have minion dematerializers, whereas nobody on the side of 100 Thieves has any minion dematerializers coming into this game, uh, which are very important for Baron Banner uh, cannon right. minions. They're a special item that you just got to keep tucked away for a little while, just in case. Yeah, it's better to have it, not need it. Let's be prepared. Bjergsen clearing out the wave once more here in the mid lane. Not quite level six on that Galio. Level six is going to be pretty huge this game, Zyrene. We've got so many big game-changing ultimates on the champions that we've seen drafted this game. The Galio, the Camille, the Zac, the Tom Kench. I mean, honestly, every single champion in this game, the ulti is some sort of enabler. You don't have anything that the ult's eh, just kind of going to make you feel a little bit better. You don't have something that it's not going to do a ton with. Level 6, I'm hoping we get to see a lot of excitement, something happening from one side or the other. Well, with less vision because Tracker's Knife is being removed from the game, you, know, ah. you might actually see that. You can see... There's way less jungle vision. It's more just shallow river vision is what we see a lot of the times now. Those control wards don't go very deep. You want them to last a long time and have them on your side of the map. So we aren't seeing a lot of control wards at like the enemy red buff or on the back side of their red pit. Uh, because it's mostly just, hey, we need to be able to protect our own jungle for invades and keep our jungler safe just in case. Uh, but it just makes some teams, you know, slow down a little bit, but other teams say, hey, it rewards proactivity because they won't see that I'm making this play on bottom lane until I actually make the play, right? They can't track me, and I don't lose my whole topside jungle for doing so. Right, you don't immediately walk over the ward and the guy says, all right, I get your chickens, I get your krugs, I get everything mm -hmm. that's gonna be here. You have more of a chance. There's more potential risk, there's more potential reward. I think that makes for a very interesting situation. It just makes it so that the aggressor has less taken away from them. So being proactive is more rewarding, especially when you aren't spotted. The Meteos will just continue farming up for now. Getting close to level six, not quite there yet. Does hit it off of grabbing that buff. So if he had a bit more mana, we might be expecting a play from him. But it will be a little bit difficult without a lot of resources in the tank for now. Hmm. I wonder if I he'll pick second blue. Because I know Meteos has this debate with all his mid laners of who second blue actually belongs to. Because I know he thinks it belongs to the jungler. I agree. I agree as well. Yeah. Second blue, man. Sometimes second blue gets you level six. You got to take it. Sometimes it gets you level six. I mean, it gives you plenty of opportunities to continue just roaming around the map, staying out on the map to make plays because you've always got your mana bar topped off. You get extra money from killing it. Mm-hmm. Just feels good. Exactly. Right now, Bjergsen does have blue. I believe it was handed over to him by Mike Young. So Medios will probably hand this over to Ryu just so they can match buffs. Now, for Mike Young, it feels a lot better to give the blue buff away since you are a Zag. You're not depending on the mana, but a little more scrappy fights here in the top side. You can see the Bomby Cinder compared to the Tiamat in terms of the purchases there. Poppy loving to pick up those tank items. Bomby Cinder definitely fitting the profile of what she wants to be doing to get these waves pushed out. Yep. Be that tank as the mid-game fights will start to happen. And one of the great things about having a Bomby Cinder on a grasp of the Undying Champion is that you don't have to auto-attack the minions like three times to stay in combat. You literally stand in the minion wave as Poppy. It charges up the four stacks you need to get to your uh, grasp of the Undying, and then you throw your shield and you get your grasp of the Undying proc. So 
you get the uh, the melee value off of it as well. So you get that extra HP. It feels really good as Poppy. Just a little bit of extra synergy there as Sunday gets the slam into the wall onto Hanser. Gets both parts of the Q there as well. Fantastic trade oh, for him. Hanser. He's late. And some what? trouble here flashing away. Sunday tries to go for the kill. Not quite able to find it. Mike Young swoops in. But Sunday walking away victorious from that one. But Mios, they might go after Mike Young here. Mike Young not gonna be dope here. Yeah, the, the Poppy W, the Steadfast Presence will stop the Camille hook shot, and he used it way too late there. Still got the best of the trade by a significant margin. Still managed to get the flash from his opponent. However, he spent his own, he expended, I should say, his own flash to do it. Yeah, so summoner for summoner there in the top side. TP used from Haunter though, so that means you do have a global advantage for 100 Thieves. Exactly, that's the advantage that he really does get out of this, is that he gets to keep his teleport Walk back because Hanser had to TP to not miss that lane wave and stay even in CS and experience. But I means someday now has his own. He'll go ahead and grab the minions because they had to push all the way across the way the lane. I don't think he really loses any there either. So now the bottom lane has to watch out for the TP that could come through from someday. And it's I like seeing this from someday after what we talked about with sort of a rough showing from him yesterday, struggling against the Shen of Impact. Can he bounce back today considering that? below par performance that he had. And it looks like he's doing a pretty good job for himself so far. Obviously, we're 10 minutes into the game. You can't tell the story of the entire match from just the opening. But when you start strong, you got a much better chance of being able to finish strong. And I like what I'm seeing from Sunday's Poppy here so far. Yeah, I also checked out his uh, runes and he's taking that, the new one that was replaced uh, by, that replaced Celestial Body, the tonic one where you get the extra potion duration movement speed. Hold on. Mike Young hitting the turret. He's trying to make the play onto Ryu here. Does manage to bring him back with a kidnap. Ryu going to be taken very low, but does stay alive. Drops the Chaos Storm to ward his opponents away. Meteo's coming in from the flank, but there's not much to find here. So he's going to take the time, shove the wave out, and let Ryu go home. Yeah, Ryu backs up. Has to blow his flash, though, and none of the summoner spells were used by TSM. So that's actually going to be a way better back for Bjergsen. And Ryu's gonna have to be sent home. He does augment one more time, and he grabs a tier. So, like I had said before, the Archangel Staff is probably what he's gonna be going for, uh, because the Hex Core has mana on it, and it just synergizes incredibly well with that item. Gives you a much bigger shield, makes you that much harder to kill in the fight. Who needs to play a tank build when you can get a 1,000 HP shield because you're stacking enough mana? That's kind of what the Orianas and the Cassios are saying right now. Even Ori and Cinder I've seen sometimes go for it. So, this will be a very tanky victor. No need for the Ice Core and Goblin. All right, checking back in on this bottom lane that we've been scrolling to every now and again. It's honestly the same story that's been told for the last 11 minutes, though, is Cody Sun and Aphromoo are just controlling the lane. They're shoving it up. They're forcing their opponents to farm underneath the turret because Sven and Mithy, as an Ezreal Tom Kench, can't really fight this 2v2. But this might be a five- or four-man dive on the bottom side because Meteos just went into that brush, found a ward in there, I believe. Yeah, ends up killing it and puts the zombie ward down in its place. And you already saw that Ryu was able to have priority mid and went down for a roam as Bjergsen back to complete that Rod of Ages. True Shot Barrage fired off by Sven just to try to clean these minions out here a little bit. TSM knows something's going on. Meteo's still down here. Here comes your engage dive onto Sven. Looking to take him down. Mithy with the save. 100 Thieves going to be forced away from this when Mike Young flies in, trying to make sure Ooh. nothing else follows this one up as TSM will expend Bjergsen's teleport there in the bottom lane as well. Yeah, Bjergsen completes the teleport. Someday actually TPs and cancels, so his is on a reduced cooldown, but that'll give Hanser a little bit of a window. But hold on, trying to make a play on mid with Ryu, who has no flash. Mithy going in. Mike Young tries to jump after this. One elastic slingshot, going to ring true, find the mark. Galio coming in now as well with the grand entrance. Ryu trying to escape away from this one. First blood over to Mithy. Meteos not there in time to save anyone. Aphromu looking to go right back in. Maybe oh. start something up. Instead, going to be kidnapped backwards. Having to dash away to safety. Mike Young going to be taken very low here, but he still has the passage ready to go. Aphromu with the flash over the wall. Keeping himself all right in this one. 100 Thieves walk away, but TSM are the victorious ones in this fight. I got to say, Mike Young in the right place at the right time down bottom because they had still spotted Meteos. And even though Meteos backed up, they still went for that play, and he read that. And I love that Mithy heads up on that play. He went for cleanse, swapped out his exhaust for it, and that made the difference there where he was stunned, but able to actually eat Sven and protect him from that dive. Fans are getting riled up too. TSM putting themselves on the board. They're excited to see this happen. Let's take a look one more time here. Yeah, Mithy and Mike Young both coming up together. The Q onto Ryu, gets him into the turret. Yep, 
And there's the slam, just gets him right on the edge. Yeah, really good unstoppable there as well from Mike Young. Channeling the ultimate to make sure he doesn't get knocked up. And he's able to pull Aphromoo and Cody further back, which forces Aphromoo to blow the flash as Hanser arrives. Well played from Mike, well played from Mithy. Honestly, the whole TSM squad coming together well there to make sure they got that play down. But now 100 Thieves trying to go for the same play they tried last time again. But instead, they're just going to scare him away, take the turret for themselves. And even though TSM got the first blood in terms of kills, it's turret first blood over to 100 Thieves. And that means they're the ones that are actually up 1,000 gold here. Yeah, and the fact that the TP from Hauntzer was blown very early on meant that they can go for that play, and Sven and Mithy can't really push up, so they place defensive wards and they just wave clear under turret. Uh, the turret takes damage, but right there, that's when Hauntzer's TP finally came back up, so if they hadn't have done that as early as they did, when you push up to try and get that turret as 100 Thieves, you risk TP flanks from behind. That can't be answered, because someday had used his. So that's right from 100 Thieves, especially Meteos, to come down there and just really brute force that turret down, because you're not going to get another opportunity to do that in the next five minutes or so. Thieves sitting with a small gold lead to their names. Got one turret up, but one kill down. First Drake is that Cloud Drake that often results in not a lot of fights being taken for it. Generally, it'll be an afterthought. Somebody will say, okay, we're in the right place according to the rotation. We'll just pick it up as we go. Yeah, and speaking of these rotations, it's like Bjergsen, we just saw that pop up on the side where he's 2-0. and zero. I believe that was a 28 KDA so far in the 2018 Spring Split. And right now, he's 25 CS up above Ryu. And if you look at the clock, it's 15 minutes, and he's already got 170 CS to his name right now. So Bjergsen on this Galio used to be one of those things where keep him away and a little bit of a TSM. Meme. Yeah, we, we want him on a carry. We want him on a carry, but... The Galio provides plenty of carry potential. Yeah, and when TSM look best this split, it's usually when Bjergsen isn't the primary carry, but he's like a secondary carry who enables the other people because he's going to do well here. But if he's able to go to side lanes and help out Hotzer and help out Sven, these other guys who really like to play for those mid late game, especially Sven, then TSM, that's when they've been looking the cleanest. Let's see if they can make anything happen on to Hauntzer here. Galio coming in, looking to keep that top laner alive. There you go, Bjergsen providing the cover necessary to get Hauntzer around. Now the TSM counterattack coming towards Cody's son. Mike Young also picking up the Rift Herald at the same time as the Thieves get away. Yeah, the fact that he's able to get the Rift Herald and nobody dies on the bottom side is huge because that's where you get to have your cake and eat it too because you usually trade sides of the map. But right now they traded basically just turret damage on that tier two. Someday, trying to get close to Sven here, see if he can do a little bit of damage, but trying to do that to an Ezreal as a poppy can often be a difficult task to be charged with as 100 Thieves continue to push here on the bottom side. The strength of the Zaya and Rakan definitely showing itself this game as these guys just continue to constantly apply pressure on the bottom half of the map. And they're allowed to do this because Meteos still holding on to that yellow trinket the entire game. Just keeps placing down as many wards as he can in the enemy jungle, and he's hovering. He's doing what you do for your split pushers as a jungler, is you just make sure that that area is completely safe, and they get that bottom tier two. All right, TSM summoning up the Rift Herald in the top side, though. They want to get something in return. They've still got no turrets to themselves yet. So let's see if they can grab something up here. Someday knocking away everything except for Shelly. Huh. Going to make the turret put a little bit more damage onto Shelly this way. Meanwhile, bottom side, 100 Thieves taking the opportunity, like I said earlier, to grab that Cloud Drake. Sort of as an afterthought. They were already there. They got what they came for. Why not pick this one up as a bit of a bonus? Someday does a good job there stopping the Rift Herald push without losing a single turret. Yeah, I actually don't remember, but I thought that you could uh, knock Shelly away. That would be pretty cheesy. I mean, I think you could at one point. I remember I remember very, hmm. very distinctly having a, a Rift Herald fly away from a, a Poppy ultimate, so. For those of you that haven't been playing League of Legends for <laughs> since the beginning of the game came out, back in, I can't remember if it was beta or if it was right as the game came out. Poppy used to be able to push Baron out yeah. of the pit. <laughs> and you could shove him into the enemy base and he would just attack everything. And you couldn't kill him because he had too much regeneration because he was out of the pit. Man, that was back when Poppy could like point and click on you and then you're the only person who could do damage to her. Yup. Like, mm. Old Poppy shoving Baron into the enemy nexus and letting him sit there. Oh my god. Yeah, good times, good I, times. I personally like this Poppy a little bit more. A, a lot bit. more. A lot more personally. <laughs> I think a lot of people like this Poppy a lot more. 100 Thieves feeling pretty good about it right now. 167 compared to the 157 in the farm department when you look at Someday and Haunts are side by side there. Someday building towards the Iceborne Gauntlet next. So a ton of armor on this guy so far. Going to be very difficult for either Haunts or Sven to do a lot of damage to. 
that means it'll be up to Bjergsen and maybe even a little bit of Mike Young to lay enough damage down to keep Someday from just diving wherever he wants to into the back lines of TSM, but it's still going to be a hard job. Oh, and it looks like the minion dematerializers are pretty much all gone in this game now. So, not saving them. It's something that we saw, like, yesterday. People were buying a bunch of banners. Now it's not as prevalent, but hold on. Oh, Cody Sun having to pop the ulti to get himself away here. Flash expended as well. 100 Thieves won't lose their AD carry, but with those resources spent, now they've got to be that much more concerned about what might follow up. Cody Sun going to be in some trouble here back away. Bjergsen comes in. TSM still oh, going to make something happen. Forward. The counterattack coming out. Sven going to be in some trouble here. Meteos coming in from the side now as well. Everybody's still alive. Bjergsen having to run away as some days here on the front line. TSM still looking to get themselves out, but Bjergsen will go down and 100 Thieves find their mark. They lose the turret, but they still group up and they're going to be able to counter push here. Listen to the crowd. They know the Thieves were able to find the play there. And now, like you said, even though the turret drops, they get the turret in return. That ends up equalizing out in terms of objectives. And the kill still goes the way of 100 Thieves answering the aggro from TSM. And that could have been way worse for TSM, but 100 Thieves able to kind of get exactly what they want out of it. And they wanted to get spent on top of it, but not quite. All right, Mithy walks up, gives him a little lick in the bush, and they walk away. Someday continues pushing up the bottom side. Monster's <laughs> uh, gonna answer that split push. And let's take one more look know. at how this happened in the top lane. Oh, so Cody Sun even flashes afterwards just in case because it did look like Mike Young was gonna get him. But then Sven goes too far forward here, but I love how you watch 100 Thieves, they disengage this by Cody Sun getting away after Bjergsen uses the ultimate. It's a little bit missed time there, could have been a little sooner, but watch this. Sven goes forward, Mithy eats him, gets hit by the Sejuani ulti, but the cleanse still comes up huge. If Mithy doesn't have that, he's dropping Sven a little bit further uh, towards the team of 100 Thieves, and Sven even blows his flash afterwards but Bjergsen is the one who gets caught down there, and then they end up going one for zero, and they get those turrets one to one. And you know, we were talking about how you said 100 Thieves so far in the four games they've played in the second half of the split here, they're three and one. The one loss came out because it looked like what you said, too many cooks in the kitchen, yep. too many people trying to shot call the heads of the Hydra all snap in different ways, but now they're a coordinated machine. Mithy gonna be caught out, pops the thick skin, keeping himself alive just a moment longer. 100 Thieves will not find that one. But look at that, they all back up even though they would 100% win that if they kept going. It's just they don't have enough vision in the jungle to know what's going on. And the T TSM uh, TP from Hanser, there's no way he could join that. And they have to keep timing Bjergsen's ultimate in the mid lane as well. I will not fault a team for erring on the side of caution. Well, because 100 Thieves yesterday, they didn't err on the side of caution. The Shen just kept showing up. It's like, yep. we're gonna all in bottom lane, boom, here's Impact Shen. That happened so many times, it ended up deciding the entire game in every single lane for 100 Thieves very early on in the game. And so right now it just seems like they're playing a little more cautious because there are semi-globals here from both the uh, the Galio and the Tom Kench. And I think that's the mark of a, a team that's recognizing their mistakes well when you're able to make those kinds of adaptations just between the two games that you're playing on the same weekend. When you can say, look, one of the issues that we had yesterday, one of our biggest problems was the fact that we were going in too often when we didn't know 100% what we were going into. We got caught off guard. Let's fix that. Let's make sure we're not making those same mistakes this time. 100 teams backing away now from the mid lane, trying to pressure onto that tier one. Will back themselves away. They still enjoy about a 1,000 gold lead here, but this game could easily go either way right now, Zyrene. Oh. And it comes down to those team fights. Hops are caught. Let's see if they can make anything happen here. Afro Moo going there in, able to find one. Now back towards two. Unstoppable. Mike Young getting himself away. Ryu falling back now as well. Cody Sun popping the ulti there. 100 Thieves. Mid priority though. They'll get damage on this turret without an answer. It depends on if Mike Young finds a way to get in there, but he's not going to nope. go for it. Not today. 100 Thieves picking up turret number four for themselves, building that gold lead up to 2,000. Drake spawning here in just a couple of moments. It is a mountain Drake, as we're going to see yet another initiation. Afro Moo going in, but Mate might be in some trouble. Backs away with just 200 HP without the ultimate there. It's a bit risky to go in like that with everyone from TSM nearby. And this is where the game gets tricky for 100 Thieves because there's double TP on TSM. They only have one themselves. And this is a 1-3-1 composition from TSM where they're just trying to make sure they can get picks. If somebody answers, 
They have the Hextech Ultimatum plus Galio Ultimate later. So, Hunter Thieves, they really want this Mountain Drake. This will help them group threaten objectives faster, and TSM want to deny it here so that they can split push and have that work out for them a little bit sooner. But Bjergsen's just TPing to join the team, not really to flank here. Yeah, Bjergsen just wants to make sure he's a part of the fight if it breaks out. It will be a full-on five oh, versus Mike five, Young's but Mike out. Young's gonna be disengaged someday with a very nice ulti there from the Poppy. But the front line of 100 Thieves, very low now. TSM still looking to secure the Drake. They've got it down to 2K. Meteos waiting over the wall. Wants to jump in here, see if maybe he can smite secure this, decides to go in for it! Mike. But it's Mike Young who's got the smite secure, TSM trying to get away from this one. Mithy with the save onto Bjergsen, but TSM still in full retreat. Ryu gonna be stunned up over the wall, Haunts are going right back in, trying to lock him down. Vin coming through as well with some damage, but everybody walks away on both sides. TSM taking the win there, grabbing the objective. Came down to a smite fight there between Medios and Mike Young. Mike Young just able to edge him out just barely. Same level on the both of them, too. Sven grabbing himself the blue buff, shifting back over the wall there. Ezreal getting a lot of use out of that buff for himself, especially with Trinity Force and Muramana done. He'll be able to spam a lot of high damage mystic shots into the front line of 100 Thieves. Warmogs is up on both of the big meatballs for the 100 Thieves composition, though, so... That poke needs to land onto somebody else for it to actually stick. Yeah, but they do have to watch out because they've heavily indexed on armor here for both of the tanks and HP. Whereas, remember, Galio, AP, he builds a lot of AP now. The Rod of Ages into the Luden's Echo. So he has that 20% CDR from Luden's. His wave clear is better for longer here where he'll be able to kill caster minions. And Winds of War is percent HP. So the Warbox isn't really going to help you as much, but hold on. Mike Young once again wisely using the unstoppable to prevent himself from being put in a lethal situation instead gonna force his opponents to fall back but he does expend the ultimate to do so 100 thieves always looking for these picks though i like the initiative that they're taking you're gonna step up the winds of war will blow and like you said this is a mage build from galio these aren't tank items at all i mean yeah rod of ages has some health on it but this guy's really gonna hurt if he can connect with that combo onto these frontliners that are not building any MR whatsoever just yet. And it even looks like Cody Sun has gone for more team fighting build himself too, because he's got the Runance Hurricane as opposed to the static shift for wave clear. And the Runance Hurricane like doesn't throw out extra feathers on Zaya or anything fancy like that. It's just to do some extra damage in team fights to peripheral targets. So it is 100 Thieves kind of indexing towards team fighting, whereas TSM, it does seem like Wave Clear is the name of the game, stall for a little bit longer, and then get themselves to a point where they can 1-3-1 one, one and catch people. Because as soon as 100 Thieves, one person is out of line, they'll be dunked on very quickly. And if the name of the game is stalling, TSM have been doing a pretty good job of it for the last 10 minutes or so. The game has been one to 2,000 gold in favor of 100 Thieves, but it hasn't really expanded beyond that. It's not like TSM are bleeding out, but now Bro? they might be caught. Whoa. Hearts are gonna be caught out there. Afromu initiating things in style as Mike Young gonna have that passive pop. TSM hopping away, the Bloblets crawl back together, but they crawl to the grave. Meteos grabs the kill, and the Thieves are on to Baron. Aphromoo has been doing so much work for 100 Thieves in the second half of the split here. That was an amazing call, because they're 4v5. Someday is bottom that whole time. Aphromoo has just been the man for this team. He has found opportunity time and time again. He sets it up here today against TSM and gets his team the Baron. Now, that 1 to 2,000 gold lead has broken into the 3,000 bracket, and they've got the chance to do more. Let's take a look. Man, with less vision, more opportunities for picks like this come through. And Aphromoo with a very clean engage onto Hanzo, who's face checking. And the other two members of TSM, because there were three right there, the other two are just about 500, 600 units away to the right, and they find that swift pick up there. All right, now, so many times, so many times, we see teams take Baron and then not find a ton with it. And a lot of times, we see teams take Baron and do amazing things with it. This is what decides it. When I'm watching a game of League of Legends, it's not about, did I get Baron? It's about, what did I do with mm -hmm. Baron? And for 100 Thieves, you've still got two turrets standing outside of the TSM base that you want to push onto. That's what they're doing right now with the 4-1 split. Yeah, and it looks like adaptation from yesterday is like no banner of commands even being built in this game right now. Meme free. Yeah. Lock it instead, and look at that. Someday off on the side, they're trying to catch him out. 
four-man collapse. That Poppy is tanky, but not tanky enough for that. The problem for TSM is... There's too many people. What have they left undefended? The answer is the middle lane. The inhibitor turret dropping now. Inhibitor under fire, but 100 Thieves, again, look at the patience being expressed from this team trying not to overstay. Aphromoo with the counterattack. Ryu gonna be taken very low. The execution not there from 100 Thieves, and TSM's able to make the collapse at 5 2. They get those two. They dissuade that siege from coming through. They protect their inhibitor, and they get to hold on to their base for a bit longer because that Baron buff off of two members. You could see the Thieves wanting to back away, but TSM was just too quick here. Yeah, the fact that they lost someday on the top side, TSM, it's opportune for them to go because it would be a 5v4 just playing the numbers game. And you can see there, even in the 4v4, they come out on top because Aphromoo is just trying to defend Ryu, who got caught out. Ryu does go down, Aphromu goes with him. So TSM, their opponents might have got the Baron, but they are not out of this one yet. Looking to take down the Tier 2 in mid lane. They'll find that one pretty easily for themselves. Game's still only 3,000 gold apart. You got one minute left on Baron, so you still got some more pushing potential for 100 Thieves. Still a Tier 2 standing there in the top lane. But if you're TSM, that's what you want to see. That chance to punish and the ability to execute when the chance is presented. Exactly. And now they're looking at 100 Thieves, who now have Zonia's on Ryu. So he went for a defensive option here as his third item. No death cap or anything like that for Burst. It's just, hey, I don't want to get completely obliterated by the team fighting of TSM, where they just single out Ryu. Because he does look like a prime target. But now he's got Zonia's and he's got the Seraph's Embrace. So unless he's in a position like he just was, right. <laughs> He's going to be completely fine. Very difficult to secure the kill onto a target like that. Zone is up on both of these mid laners, meaning they both have that playmaking slash outplay potential as the Ocean Drake will go the way of 100 Thieves. And I do like Sven's itemization here. He went for those three primary items and went into the Last Whisper next immediately. So you saw all of that armor that's being built on Someday and Meteos. Now there's a little bit more on Ryu. So this item is definitely worth it right now to pick up on that Ezreal at this point in the game. Whereas Cody Sun, his itemization I think is also on point because there isn't as much armor on the enemy team. Right. It's a bruiser Camille. And then you also have Mike Young going more towards the uh, AP uh, defenses very early on. And I like seeing players make sure they're adapting their builds properly based on the situation in the game. Leave the cookie cutters at home for Christmas with grandma. Make sure that you're taking each game as an opportunity of its own to assess what's going to be the wisest choice. I like what we're seeing so far. QSS also now picked up by Cody. Wants to make sure if he gets caught out or stunned up, he's got that get out of jail free card. Because he's kind of the one that if he goes down, then it might actually just be over because he's so much DPS. And they're a three tank team right now, considering that the Recon I say is on that little bit of a tankier side here. Mm -hmm. And he has that Ardent Sensor. Just two and a half meatball. Enable him. Yeah, exactly. Two and a half. Um, and so they're trying to enable Cody Sun, who has that super high damage per minute, right? But just keeping him alive in these late game fights. I thought this patch wasn't going to go as late game, but 100 Thieves, if they stall that point, that's where they've been finding a lot of their victories. This split is off of those late game coordinated calls from this veteran team. We'll see if they can do it. Still up against plenty of veterans on the side of TSM. I mean, you're talking about a team that knows how to win in late game. TSM have pulled off some crazy ones in the past. It's still a very close game if you're looking at the gold in this one. Not even 2,000 apart between the two teams. We talked about how the 80 carries both have plenty of items online. The mid laners also packing plenty of punch as the front liners are getting themselves pretty tanky here as well. Elder Drake will also be on the table the next time the dragon spawns. And you can see as the timer appeared right there on your screen, Baron's up in two minutes. So plenty of stuff available to fight for here very soon as Mike Young charges up the slingshot, goes over the wall. Here comes the Galio. Zonia's popped by Ryu, keeping himself safe. Into the middle goes Bjergsen. Ryu hopping away for now. Aphromoo going to be taken low, but not Ooh. down. Haunter swooping in. Hextech ultimatum is issued, and the Thieves are caught as Haunter is going to be brought down instead. Finn looking to run away from Cody. Feathers fly as he's able to root up Mithy. Sven getting himself away, but the stun is down, and Mike Young is out. Someday, grab the kill. That fight is just all over the place. 100 Thieves actually win it despite losing Aphromo super early on, and that's because they're able to divide their damage and keep those guys alive. 100 Thieves now has the opportunity to push up the mid lane here. It's TSM standing only two men strong, trying to defend. The inhibitor likely not defensible in a position like this. Meteos and Someday, they're just too much of a front line. Gives Cody plenty of time to hit that inhib, take it down. They'll back away. 
reset because Baron Zyrene is just a minute away in this one. And a lot of summoner spells actually blown there. And the flashes from the AD carries are very important. Watch this. Watch Ryu. He places down after he comes out, throws down his W after he gets away, throws down the ultimate. There's this stun lock position there. So much damage comes through. Even though Afro move comes out, Hotzer comes in with a little bit of a Kung Fu kick there, right over with the flash. They take him out, but now Cody, he's just so much damage, and he decides he's gonna go flash after Sven. He's not able to kill him, but regroups with his team there instead of chasing down the two, just to help those tanks kind of finish off that last one. Three-man tank fight there in the river. Two tanks versus one. The two's gonna win just about every time. Super well played, I think, by Afro and Ryu. Ryu with the Zonias to avoid the initial burst. Afro, as soon as the ultimate from Galio came through, he countered, got the knockups, and then Ryu got to cleanse, walk away, and throw down his own stun and ultimate to contribute. 100 Thieves starting up the bear and deciding they want to go for this. TSM popping the TP. Saying, all right, we'll answer it. Baron down to 4K. Hextech ultimatum going to be issued. Here comes the Galio dunk into the back of the pit. Baron still going to be left alive. Mike Young taken low. TSM trying to disengage from this when their jungler is nearly dead, and that means the secure is there for 100 Thieves. Hey, someday had a stopwatch pretty much this entire time. Finally uses it there as he <laughs> ends up being the target of the bjergsen Hotzer combo. And then they have to all just kind of get out of the pit because Ryu is now doing some serious damage here. This has been one hell of a game so far. I mentioned how these two teams were tied in the standings coming into this one, how they would both like to grab a win here to really show that, hey, they're the team that should be one of the standout names you're looking off heading towards the postseason. And right now, 100 Thieves are looking good as they press up into the top side of the TSM base. Inhibitor number two will be their target. Inhibitor turret still standing pretty well for now. That cannon minion not exactly as defensible as some of the bannered up cannon minions that we've seen in other games since the patch hit because no banner, no banner minion. Mm -hmm. 100 Thieves potentially wishing that they had one of those right now, but things have been going well for them so far, so they'll just have to continue on without it. I mean, it's seven to five right now. Hold on, though. After move going in, Mike Young also going to be minding his way in the back line, but he's charmed up and brought down Cody Sun with the damage. 100 Thieves now in a five versus four, going right back into the mix. Here we go. Haunts are in the back line, but it's Bjergsen trying to slam dunk right in the middle. Ryu with the Zonia's flashed away to keep himself alive. Haunts are trying to remain unstoppable. Someday still going to be stuck there on the front line. The ultimatum seals his fate. As 100 Thieves try to get themselves away, Sven goes forward. Mithy into the very back. That was a gift for the Thieves. A double kill for Cody. And that may just be the game. That may not just be gift of the kills. That might be the gift of the game there, Flowers. Tragic decision there from TSM. And the Thieves will take it all the way to the Nexus. Pushing now four men strong into the base. Nexus turret number one under siege. Hauntzer and Sven, they'll try to do the impossible defense here. They do manage to take down Cody with one hell of an uppercut kick from Hauntzer. Next is going to be Ryu, and TSM will hold the line. That's Cody's first death of the game there as they're trying to push for that end. It looked like it was within 100 Thieves' grasp, but nope. TSM able to actually counterattack there. But that has just been an insane series of events. It does put 100 Thieves in a very good position with those inhibitors down, but at the same time, it's still TSM in the game. Let's take one more look at how everything happened here in the top lane. Aphromu on the trigger once again. Yeah, Aphromu goes in but gets burst down incredibly low. At right afterwards, you'll see it here, where Mike Young, he's the one who starts it off. I don't think he has the passive and he just gets burst. But hold on, Elder Dragon's on the table. That's more important right now for the state of the game. All right, TSM want to secure this one for themselves. You definitely don't want to give it away to 100 Thieves. They'll take it down to 3K. Not quite secured just yet. Meteos over the wall might be looking to go in, steal it away. If he can, a very nice denial comes out from the Poppy. But you've still got the secure there from Sven's Ezreal. TSM picking up the buff for themselves. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty weak one, but it's still an Elder Dragon all the, le all the less. So it's just Baron buff is going to tick away. Now they get to defend their base. And this is more gold because those super minions are going to keep clearing the waves of TSM. That gold doesn't go to any member of 100 Thieves. So TSM are now going to be in a spot where they can wave clear. They are stronger with the Elder Dragon buff, so you don't want to engage on them as 100 Thieves. And there's no real neutral objective to push for here on the map for 100 Thieves. So TSM are in a spot that I actually think is pretty good for the defense. 
We'll see how much longer they can hold. They do have an inhibitor respawning just now there in the mid lane, so a bit less pressure on the map now for 100 Thieves just being generated thanks to those. But the Thieves will continue to push up here on the bottom side. Cody Sun loses half his HP to the Winds of War, and the Thieves need to back out. Yeah, I was about to say that Bjergsen is now on four items. His death cap just gives him 175 AP from the passive. So it's a 295 Ooh. AP Ooh. item. He is sitting at 613 AP on this Galio. Yeah, you're gonna need some MR on the side of 100 Thieves if you wanna be able to deal with that one, but five items on the mid laners, five and a half items on the AD carries. We are approaching the end game. We're near the summit of the power that these champions are gonna hit this time around. So it's not so much gonna be about the small gold lead that the Thieves have had for the whole game. It's just gonna be about who plays it better, who executes right. Can Aphromu continue to find those engages or will TSM once again hold the line? Baron and Elder both down, so there's not any big neutral objective that will force TSM to come out of the base and try to contest for. 100 Thieves just backing away, playing this one slow, waiting for the chance to strike. Like we mentioned earlier, they're not falling into that trap that they fell into yesterday saying, okay, we've got some information, let's just go for it, and this should work out. Everything needs to be a certainty this game. Especially at this point as well, you have to have you know, with so many people trying to call things because there's so many veterans on both these teams, you really do have to have that one unifying voice and it has to be the correct call as well because if you follow a wrong call at this point in the game, we've seen TSM able to defend their base off of Ponser getting a true damage kick onto Cody when they're trying to push. Things like that, those small things where people aren't in the right position just make all the difference. And now we have Baron in a minute and 30 seconds. It feels like it was just up a second ago. Well, 100 Thieves want to try to continue controlling this one, seal the deal with it if they can. TSM will do everything in their power to prevent that, but last time, their plans were foiled. 100 Thieves played the Baron fight very well, forced Mike Young away. Mike Young on that Zac, sitting on four items right now, so normally you would look at a Zac with a Cinder Hulk and a Spirit Visage and a Randuins, and you'd say, hey, he's pretty tanky. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the damage itemization on the carries of 100 Thieves, he doesn't feel that tanky. I would say, though, that he's actually in a pretty okay spot because there's no penetration on the side of Ryu. Ryu actually itemized more for defensive proper properties because he's going to get dove and he needs a way to survive. So doubling down on both the Zonias and the Seraphs has made it so he doesn't have Void Staff at this point. It might be a sixth item. But even then, he doesn't have a uh, Death Cap. Right now, Bjergsen has like 100 more AP than him. He actually has 106 more AP on the on himself, and now he actually has that uh, potion on top of it. We'll see if Ryu does go for the Void Staff here. Wouldn't be too surprised to see that as a pickup, especially since Death Cap doesn't build out of one anymore. Yeah, two needlessly large rods. I still... That still throws me for a loop, man. I'm still used to only seeing two needlessly large rods in the inventory and thinking the guy is trolling. Yeah, I mean, and now I mean, it actually I mean, builds into an item. I made a big mistake, because somebody was like... Uh, they posted a Reddit clip of uh, Faker, and he looked tilted, and then he bought two needlessly large rods, and I was like, oh, he's mega tilted. Was like, <laughs> no, he's really wait, tilted. No, he's, he's just not. buying he's these stupid items. Item. <laughs> that's what we get for being junglers, not mid laners. Yeah, yeah, that's what we get for never actually having to buy any of those things. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of AP junglers. But anyway, in this game, though, Hauntzer running up mid, and right now, Baron is on the table, and it just looks like another team fight. It's not a split push here. It's not a macro game. Everybody's just trying to get to the other person's back line or play it front to back, and we'll see what Afro's able to do on his engage and what TSM are able to do to counter. So much of this game has been Afro move, finding the times to go in. Someday, might have looked like he was caught out there for a second. Steadfast Presence going to be disengaging this one. Look at a fight here in the corridor. Stunned down onto Mithy. In the back line goes Afro move. Lots of stuns all across the board. Mike Young looking to drag some back. They're going to pop the Resurrect. Can they find anything else? TSM looking to run for the hills as Hauntzer falls. Mike Young trying to get away through the backside as 100 Thieves will now take control over this game for the next 54 seconds. Hauntzer down. Mike Young still alive. Smite Steel potential is there. TP from Bjergsen into the bottom part of the map. Wants to go for something with this massive minion wave here. 100 Thieves going for the Baron themselves. Mike Young nowhere nearby to steal this one away. But now, what do the Thieves decide to do? You've got to try to stop Bjergsen here. It's going to be five backs. Bjergsen getting himself away will not find the inhibitor itself, but cracks the base open by taking the turret. Let's take another look at how this fight broke out. Bjergsen has ultimate this entire time, but they're looking for just a better opportunity to use it. You see, he walks up here. Still, doesn't feel like there's enough people around. Then there's the ultimate going down. Yeah, it just seems like Mithy, 
eats Hauntzer there. Hauntzer then gets caught up in that stun, and then his Guardian Angel is just popped afterwards. So Bjergsen never uses the ultimate in this fight because he doesn't feel like there's an opportune time to do it. And that's the combo right there. You're supposed to be able to just push both of those ultimates and somebody's going to get obliterated, but it looked like they just never found the opportunity to do so. 100 Thieves now with another Baron. Trying to find the opportunity to use that as Meteos will be forced to flash away, nearly getting himself caught out there. Aphromoo and Someday still thinking about maybe making something happen here. Another well-timed, steadfast presence from Someday's Poppy. I talked about how I've been impressed with this guy throughout this game. The Poppy proving to be a solid pick for him here as 100 Thieves will push up the top side in towards the inhibitor. They've got two exposed inhibs, one still left with the turret to defend it. Cody Sun only taking two ticks of damage from the Winds of War, but will lose his shield as well as a little bit of his health just from those two minor ticks. Bjergsen, we talked about how much damage he's doing on this Galio. You've really got to respect that if you're the 100 Thieves backline. PSM not willing to yield this inhib. They're saying, we know this is a fight in open ground, but we're pretty sure we can still take it. Yeah, and Bjergsen, he does a lot of damage if it lands onto somebody like Cody Sun, but if he's positioned correctly, you're not going to find those. And it'll also do a lot of damage to Someday, but Someday's just itemized towards making sure he can soak all of those Mystic Shots. He has 430 armor right now on this Poppy, so he is 100% okay. Haunts are doing a lot of damage uh, there to Meteos. Meteos Late jumping away. Haunts are trying to escape. TSM still hold the line for now, but it's Ryu who's managed to find his way towards the inhibitor. Jumped on there by Mike Young, who's not going to go with a full engage on this one. Ryu down to one quarter HP means 100 Thieves have to back away from this one. Oh, they came so close to getting that inhib. TSM doing a good job with that defense. Yeah, a lot of that wave clear from the Galio Q. Believe, yeah, it was a single Galio Q. I don't see much else actually hitting Ryu there. And did about 1,500 HP to him. Oof, that's a lot. Yeah, it's a, it's a hell of a lot. But now Elder Dragon on the table. 15 seconds on it. Remember, this is the Uber Elder Dragon. If TSM get it. Uber Elder Dragon. Right? The first one for a team is only that 35 burn, etc. This one is just like out of this world, doubles all the buffs that you have, gives you like 90 plus uh, true damage. Even if you don't have very many, and the duration is longer, I believe, if you have this one. I believe it goes up to three and a half minutes, but hold on. If there's a fight to make, this is going to be it. They're able to go in. 100 Thieves looking to go on to Bjergsen. Can they find the damage? Mike Young with a kidnap into the back line as Cody Sun's looking to evade on to Haunter. Mike's taking low. Bjergsen's taking low. TSM is routed, and 100 Thieves are looking to go straight for the jugular. Bjergsen is down. Make that one a four for one. Ben can't do anything and the Thieves make the victory march down mid lane. Instead of waiting for the Elder Dragon, they pull the trigger, 100 Thieves come out on top right now. Sven's trying to just say, I can clear this wave. No minions, but it doesn't matter. They have no turrets. 100 Thieves says, you can have the wave. We really don't care. We're just going for the Nexus. And 46 minutes into the game, 100 Thieves will take down TSM and claim their hard-earned victory. 100 Thieves had a little bit of a slip yesterday, but that was something that when I talked to Prawley about it, he's like, there's not much you can take from that game. We lose in the first few minutes because then it just snowballs. You can't look at those mid-late game fights. It's just clean that up, and then the rest of it will fall into place. And right there, 100 Thieves, from the get-go, very calm, collected game, controlled it, and then won those team fights. Calm, collected game, no over-aggression. We talked about how we wanted to see Afromu be that big playmaker again, and how we wanted to see Someday step up from the lackluster performance yesterday, and both of those boxes got big fat check marks. Oh yeah, Afromu not having to worry about global ultimates from the top lane. Now he has to worry and play around things like the Galio, but he's still able to find those pockets. In that last fight, he protected Cody Sun. Cody Sun took pretty much no damage in that last fight and was heavily protected from that Rakan. Cody Sun, once again, a huge game from him. 53,000 damage in 46 minutes. That DPM is just going to look better and better and better. And he got in a couple of different situations where it looked like, oh, is TSM going to get him here? But he played it well. He used the ultimate when he need to. He was able to outplay the damage, not get himself caught. He died one time throughout the course of the entire game. Cody had an awesome game. Let's go ahead now, though, and send things down to Avali and Cody himself for more on that win. Thanks, guys. Cody, congratulations on that win. I mean, how does it feel to pick up the win for, you, for your team and take down TSM? Uh, I think uh, it always feels really good to win against TSM. 
Uh, for me, I always have trouble playing against DSM. Um, so yeah, like losing them in regular season and finals um, always feels really bad. So yeah, I'm pretty happy that we got this win. What about TSM makes it difficult to play against them? Uh, I think they just have the mentality to never give up uh, no matter what. And, you know, when, like, no matter how much ahead you are against TSM, even if you're 5K, 10K gold uh, ahead, um, if they make, like, one comeback play, everyone just chants TSM, and it's like, oh, they're going to win again. So, yeah, um, that's why it's pretty hard to play against them. Well, you guys didn't give up and pulled off the win in that game. Now, Aframu has been getting a lot of praise and uh, support for some of the plays that he's been doing. But you played phenomenally today, I think. Do you ever find yourself wanting that same recognition? Uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes it feels kind of bad if you think, like, um, you played well and then uh, everyone just, uh, you know, says, oh, Aframu carried again and stuff like that. But... Uh, I really like it uh, to give the support the spotlight as well because I feel like, you know, he's dedicating his whole role just to support you and, you know, he's doing whatever he can just to help you get like a CS lead or anything. So, I mean, it, feel, it always feels good to give back and, you know, uh, recognize that, you know, your support is doing a lot for you. Well, you're the best AD carry for recognizing your support. Congratulations again on the win. And for more on the game, let's hear from the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, Avli. Battle between teams tied in the standings. It was precarious situations for both of these Close teams game. throughout the game, but ultimately 100 Thieves come out on top, moving to 8-6. and six. So a healthy spot now in the standings, tied with the teams above them for third place. Uh, but ultimately, I mean, this game, yeah, it was just a crazy chaotic game. After a little bit, it started really slow, though, because the poppy counterpick worked out perfectly in the top side so that they couldn't pull off any Gamil uh, plays, as we call yep. them. The bot side was losing naturally to Zaya Rakan, so Galio didn't have that many places to go. It actually results in a fair amount of fights breaking out in the mid lane of all places, which is usually not where you see the pressure go when you have a Galio. Yeah, and so much of the early game did come down to execution, and also Hots are getting caught out a few times to prevent TSM from being able to make proactive Galio Camille plays, and then it actually reached a certain point where the damage dealers of 100 Thieves were no longer that vulnerable to the combo. This fight was the best of all, where they technically catch Ryu, but he's Zonia's, and then when he's out of Zonia's, he has Saris and his Q for massive shields to make him incredibly hard to kill, and it takes so long for TSM to try and throw damage down onto him, they actually never even get the kill, and at that point, they can't do the hard engage anymore, so it becomes even harder for TSM. It was still a long game, though, as they went back and forth in a number of these team fights. They had to play it really defensively, uh, and you see that after that initial counter engage is out, if you're still not careful, uh, full AP Galio does a lot of damage. Yes. And so a couple of times, people were a little lack of, uh, lax of days pull with the Winds of War, end up getting chunked out there, and you see that if they don't follow up on the engage as well, they can lose yeah. the fight. Also a bit of an oopsie here. Mithy's like, we got it, guys, as Haunter is going over the wall, and Zven gets zoned by Victor. I think that was the biggest thing. They were expecting Zven to be able to follow up, but Ryu completely zoned him out, and that lost all of their Nexus turrets, so it puts them in a pretty precarious situation. Yeah, this was definitely a game that TSM was making it difficult to win. You heard Cody Sun kind of singing their praises for that, but they never really got control of the game back after that mid-game. You see all these fights taking place on TSM's side of the map, as well as the fact that TSM is losing all these fights. So it was a somewhat one-sided game with how well the draft went in Hunter mm -hmm. Thieves' favor, as well as Weird how to call well it one-sided when the gold graph looks like that, but I, but I understand the thinking right. yeah. behind that. Yeah, it was definitely a game that felt like it was up in the air, but all the fights kept going in their favor, generally speaking. Right. They had the objective, yeah. generally speaking, so it, it did feel like Hunter Thieves was in control the entire time. Now, that said, you mentioned, you know, haunts are getting caught. This kind of ties back into that whole discussion around yeah. the top lane meta and the way it's developing. Camille, one of the few carry top laners still getting picked up and yet uh, you get picked off just that easily. Right, and it's not that he was necessarily dying in all of these, but he was taking away TSM's ability to engage. And a lot of this actually does come down to what we feel like is less vision in the meta right now. Most of these are blind and normally that's a big tanky dude who's going to face check those brushes uh, and you can punish the other team for hard engaging on you. But TSM couldn't do that with Camille in this game. And also, the Rakan is one of the best champions in the game to engage from Fog. 
Yeah, it's a situation where you are playing Zach, Gallio, Camille, and using a lot of that stuff defensively. That is not at all the yeah. win condition for that comp, right. as well as the fact that the early game didn't go their way, where this team should be wanting to play from ahead. All right, you already kind of called it out, the Rakan, and we saw it in the majority of those replays, Afromo being the initiator for 100 yeah. Thieves. So with the vision established, finding those engagements, uh, so big plays by him. But but for this 100 Thieves squad, moving to 8-6, and six, I mean, it's a good recovery from their loss yesterday and continues what is a, a nice streak for them most recently. Yeah, I agree. And a lot of it was with Zyra Khan, which is something we wanted to talk about a little bit more since we've seen Blue Side now take it five out of eight games, three times they first pick either the Zaya or Rakan. And we got to have a kind of a larger discussion on why we think Red Side would be deprioritizing it. Some of it has to do with bans. But the other thing is just the improved laning power with how important early game can be, plus the engage potential of the Rakan with limited vision, I think is rewarding the teams who were clearly on board with getting their practice up on these two champions and punishing those who did not. Because even yesterday when TSM was blue side, they were throwing a ban at it. So even if blue side has the chance to either force a ban or get both of them, because no one's going to be taking Rakan without Zyre right now. Yeah, and if you saw those stats down the corner, it's been absolutely instrumental in the wins that it gets. It usually has monster CS leads. Even in the game that Optic lost just previous to this one, the Zyra Rakan was smashing the laning phase and was a big factor in why they had the advantages in the early game. And it's becoming a bit of a concern if you don't play Zyra Rakan or you're not game planning specifically against that. And if you combine it with TSM sticking with Camille in situations where it feels like other people have given that up, you can f seems like they just weren't well prepared, prepared for 8.4 this weekend. Right, it's one of those things that we kind of saw during Worlds. Once Tarek yeah. comes out, you see the response like, oh, a super defensive comp. Well, let's just make sure that we can get on to that one defensive character in the Tarek and, and immediately kill him. That's how this game ended. It's just the Galio is who they engaged on mm -hmm. to prevent him from being able to play Galio in a later entrance to the fight. Yeah, full AP Galio. Something that 100 Thieves has been strong at all year was winning the close games they are in. Mm -hmm. They were in control of this game with a few thousand gold lead, but they still were able to convert. And you look at this upcoming schedule for them now, Golden Guardians and Optic will be incredibly important for them to perform against because if they right. win those two games, they are solidly in playoffs at that point. That yeah. would put them to 10 wins. Uh, and I, I have to credit them for being able to bounce back so quickly after getting decimated by Liquid yesterday. It's also important that they tie up TSM in the head-to-head -head now in case these mm. standings stay close because it does yeah. feel like these guys are going to be battling specifically Clutch, TL, TSM, and, and 100 Thieves here for that fourth through or second through sixth position. So right. they need to get all these head-to-head -head victories in these critical matchups to make sure they don't get forced down into tougher matchups. Yeah, playoff seeding is a concern for these teams as we close in on the end of the regular season. We're stepping away when we return. It's Golden Guardians facing off against Cloud9. Don't touch that browser.